Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome back to week three of our Downshift Racing League recap. For the first race here we have, it is Tuesday, so we're back to the spec race and that is hosted by me and it is on Brands Hatch Indy but with the shifter cards. And this first lap was incredibly close and competitive we are all swapping places, and it was all chaos, and was amazing. And then we get to the end of the lap one. And as we're talking, I'll let this play out. First time I've seen your race suit. Didn't realize you were a, uh, a cigarette smoker there, huh? <laughs> Marlboro Reds, apparently. Oh, boy. You're gonna f me up. I'm looking at my suit. God damn it, Lesby. <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> Lesby. Uh. That was. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny right there. Pavin, that is the first time I've seen your suit. <laughs> what do you got with there, huh? <laughs> Goddamn, stop. <laughs> Good man. Good man. So that's one of the things that I do often forget when it comes to racing is that most actual professional race car drivers do not have intercoms radios to other drivers because if they did the amount of mental games and the loud and the amount of just absolute insults being thrown around would be too great. But in this instance, it actually was quite helpful for at least me. Again, I completely forgot about this whole mental thing where it's just like, hey, you know, what color is your race suit? Well, I don't know. And they spin out, you know. Uh, but it was not very long until we had noticed that some people are just instinctively faster than others. All while this was going on, Pavin just takes off into the distance. And I was even noticing in practice, you know, I got down a pretty solid time and I was just noticing that Haven just is able to push this a little bit quicker. And when it comes to this race, it was rather interesting because this was the first race with a new individual by the name of Bulldog. And while this was going on, the lobby was unfortunately a little bit smaller than uh, we were hoping. It sounded like that there was quite a bit of bad weather going through the you know, majority of the U.S. during this time, and we actually lost Magnum to a power outage before the racing started, which was quite unfortunate because I was just imagining what this lobby would have looked like with, like, eight or nine people. It would have been just absolute chaos in the best kind of way. And as newcomers go, it's quite fun to be able to start with a complete stranger, not know them at all, and kind of get into that process of getting to know them, figure out what their personality is like, and in this instance, what their driving style is like. Again, we have really never interacted with Bulldog at all, and we're finding out very quickly that this guy's got some serious pace, because by about lap eight, he crept up on me and did a really clean pass on the outside of turn one. I'm still not sure how he managed to make it stick. I am still massively impressed on this part because I come up onto the inside of turn one like he's going to go for it so I'm going to give him all the room in the world and then boom he's just flat out going down the hill on the outside manages to keep it on and, and not fall off into the gravel I'm just like wow that was a crazy move and shortly thereafter um, I'm trying to do a little bit of catching up here and I just fall off you know I, I go a little bit Hard on the power, do a little bit of a spin out, you know, get a little bit of oversteer and get kicked off into the grass. And something that I know I need to personally work on is when I am re-entering the course, I need to be a little bit better about looking at who's coming because I almost, almost take out Flanders there. So at this point, I'm just getting in the groove. It's like I'm hoping that my lines are cleaner, a little bit quicker than everybody else's. But at this point, Bulldog and Paven take off into the distance. Shio and Flanders are having their own infighting, and I'm just sitting back on, oops, that sucks. Until lap 18, where all of a sudden all the Stuarts are pulling out their yellow flags, and we're all going, well, what in the world's going on? And weirdly enough, Paven has his own mistake a little bit after lap two. 
and goes straight off into the grass and has an absolutely spectacular crash. And Bulldog takes the lead at this point. Uh, Paven, is, Paven and Bulldog were both just really far out there where there was no hope of even catching Paven because it still seemed like he was 10, 20 seconds ahead of everybody else. So it was just, oh well, that's... <laughs> If he could do that one more or one or two more times, maybe we could be a little bit more competitive. But nope, that was that was his only mistake that race. And at this point, again, I'm just trying to catch up. It's not really going so well. Shio and Flanders are perfectly a set distance ahead, and I'm just trying to reel them in until Shio falls off in lap 23, and then we finally get our own epic battle. Where across the line, we're neck and neck. We're drag racing down to turn one. And again, I'm on the inside. I break early, but he also breaks early too. So we both go down the turn one at about the same pace. Drag racing again down to turn two. I get to the apex of turn two a little bit before he does. I slam on the brakes early. And then we're again drag racing down to turn three. And at this point, I'm able to pat to you know just get a little bit of a pace ahead. I cut him off into turn three, have a little bit of a tap, and then at this point I, I wonder if that tap just upset his car a little bit because at this point it seems like he lost like a second immediately. So I do apologize if that tap was ultimately what made that pass work. But at this point it was pretty said and done. I'd made the pass stick. Shio was not able to catch up and I go over across the line in fourth place. So not really where he wanted to be, but given the circumstances, I think I had a pretty good recovery drive. So for this Thursday, it is Grand Valley Highway with our Group B cars, and I spent all of Wednesday with Magnum Star practicing different cars, figuring out what the best car and best tune were, and finally settled on the Audi Quattro, and man, did I feel confident. I felt competitive. I felt great. This video is going to go very differently, though. So I qualify in fourth position. Reverse grid, though, is uh, being accounted for here. So I spend lap one, as most people do, trying to avoid chaos. And this was a very eye-opening experience in a lot of different ways. Lap one completely demolishes me. There are just so many accidents where I'm trying to avoid people, people are going in deep and I am not able to account for it, I'm not able to get out of their way in time, I'm not making enough room for people to come up on the inside, I'm just struggling hard. These tires are not up to temperature, whenever I fall off the road, you know, the dirt is getting in the way and keeping the tire temperature and tire grip way down low, I am struggling hard. I was excited to come into the race, but then it got the best of me. But with everything that happened, I was so hopeful and just in this mode of, I can do this, I can win, I've got the great car and a great setup, and it just didn't go that way. So at this point, I am dead silent. I am fuming. I do not say a word for the rest of the night. I am just putting down my foot. So in the middle portion of the race, I'm actually quite impressed because even though I'm not focused on the lap times at all because I'm just seething, my blood is boiling, I'm just trying to just put the hammer down, make up any positions I can, my middle sector, like the middle part of the race, was amazing for those lap times. I actually do catch up and start fighting with the pack a little bit. And then lap 10 happens where, you know, there was a comment made earlier in the race saying, you know, watch out for turn one. It's starting to get a little bit greasy and I just lock up in turn one. My car is flung the wrong way. You know, I get into the dirt a little bit and it's like, okay, I can recover from this. I can recover from this. And then a couple of corners later, I have a massive accident. So not only did that first little incident where I fall off, you know, get my tires covered in dirt, I get a uh, 
penalty off of it, but then this massive accident gets me spun around the wrong way. I lose my position to Flanders, and I lose the penalty to Ring. But in this situation, I am using, I am still trying my hardest. I'm still driving. I'm probably overdriving at this point, and yet I managed to keep it mostly clean for this last part. You know, I come up to the last lap, ring him. I'm trying to catch up to Ring as much as I can. He actually has his own incident just after the penalty line, and I'm able to just pass it up on the inside and secure fifth place. So I want to take this moment to really talk about this race. It ruined a lot of different things for me. And it almost ruined joining the league in its entirety. Where I got in my head so much about being competitive, having the right car, hitting those lap times, hitting the apexes perfectly, everything... That when stuff happens outside of your control and you're just furious, you lose sight of why you're there. That race was not fun. Obviously. But the underlying issue is... I came to this group because I wanted friends with similar interests. And I wanted to have fun. And I lost sight of that. And it took me a couple of days of talking it over with a couple of them, you know, mainly Shio and Magnum and then a little bit of Haven as well, where it's just like they've all been there too, which was really cool to see. Not cool that they had bad experiences, but just to have that camaraderie of like, you know, we've all had poor races that we thought we'd do well in and then stuff happens. But it's not how you react mainly in that moment. It's what you do after it. So after some cooling down, we started to be in a little bit more open with what kind of cars and what kind of tunes we're using. And I set up a 92 Acura Integra. And I just do a couple of practice runs at our next track. And when it comes to this next track on Sunday, I'm not trying to win anymore. I'm trying to learn how to use my shifter. I'm trying to learn how to drive the car to the best of my ability. And I'm trying to have fun. If I win, great. But with this group of people, I'm probably not going to win. I am solidly in midfield. So I'll drive to the best of my ability. So for the Sunday race, it is at Suzuka Circuit East Course, which... Ironically, I was practicing at the Tokyo Express East clockwise, so not the right course, but eventually you know, I joined early enough to realize what I was doing and then managed to get my car tuned up and ready for the actual course. And after having enough issues with not bringing NOS to Sunday races, I finally get Nitrous installed, and I'm finally feeling right at home where you need to be so i qualify in eighth out of 11 people so not great but this opening kind of lap was awesome for a couple of different reasons where i was able to keep my nose clean and just have fun and it was great just rolling through the gears and just enjoying myself so the first couple of laps, I'm actually having some pretty decent fighting with Paven. Again, Paven's single lap pace has been amazing because he's been able to pull out these incredible qualifying laps. I guess in this race, he wasn't able to pull it together. And I was just expecting him to, you know, just boost off into the distance, and he didn't. So I'm like, man, I might actually have a chance here for once. And we're going through, and we're having some very close fighting in a couple of different points. And in the straightaway, he's not pulling away. I'm like, okay, so I can... Maybe if I use a little bit of NOS here, I might be able to keep it up. At one point, uh, I go a little bit wide. And then the next lap, he actually goes wide in the first corner. So again, we're still going back and forth, back and forth. Until I have my own accident. 
So as I'm having this fighting with Paven, he's just a little bit faster than me, and he just seems to keep it out in front of me this entire time. But looking back at these lap times, I'm noticing how consistent they are. You know, starting at lap 5, it's 55-7, then it's 55-6, then it's 55-6, then it's 55-8, then 55-4, then 55-5, until the inevitable happens, where, of course, I have my mistake I go a little bit wide in turn one. The marbles are already starting to stack up. You know, the, the tire wear is starting to pull off chunks of tire and creating this really slippery edge of turn one. I get, I go a little bit wide. The back end gets grabbed, pulled in. I spin out and I lose my place. And I'm kicking myself going, ah, oh, man, I should have seen that coming. And just as I'm trying to rejoin, I've got this yellow blur that goes straight in front of me as Magnum takes by. And again, I need to work on my rejoining ability because, man, it's just next time I just nearly take somebody else out again. I need to work on adjusting the map and getting myself all into order before I go out onto the road because one of these days somebody's not going to see it and we're going to have a massive accident. So at this point... It was quite interesting because Magnum and myself during practice were noticing how close our carbs were. I mean, he was running like an old style Mini Cooper that was really souped up and I was running the 92 Integra Type R. And we were in practice, we were just practicing close driving with one another because both of our tire wear were going off at about the same rate. I was going a little bit faster in the corners and he was going a little bit faster in the straight, but it was this, the S's in this course are such that if you're behind somebody, there is not a good spot to pass at all. You just kind of got to go through the S's and then maybe make some passes on the straight. Unless if somebody's going really slow and gives you a lot of space, a pass is really not happening. So I'm seeing him just off in the distance going, okay. I can make this work. I'm, I'm, my goal is to get up to Magnum. And we both had planned on pitting around lap, you know, the beginning of lap 16. We both dive into the pits. I probably didn't need to take fuel, so that made my pit a little bit longer than it should have. But, you know, just top up a little bit and definitely get new tires. We come out of the pits, and again, he's still a couple seconds ahead of me, so I'm just making that goal of I gotta get in front of him I gotta get in front of him I gotta catch him I gotta catch him I gotta catch him so right out of the pits I make two crazy laps in qualifying I just couldn't put the time down like in in time trial I was getting a little bit better but finally lap 17 right after the pits I pulled down a 54 nearly dead and then a 54 nine so a little bit of a difference between the two but much better than the 55.5, 55.6 that I was doing on average in the first stint. So by lap 19, after two incredibly quick laps, I'm breathing down Magnum's neck, and then here we go. Oh, you are not letting me by. None of that. No, 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 no. You get back here. You get back and sit in front of me again, and we'll, and we'll do that again. <laughs> so a lot of incredibly close racing for a couple of laps there. And just this back and forth where I am able to get him, in, get him in the corners, and then he's able to get me in the straights. Then he's using Nas to chase me down. I'm using Nas to chase him down. And then finally, I get the pass. I make it stick. And... He stays behind. So this next, next part is pretty uneventful. I'm just doing the laps, you know, trying to keep a consistent time. There's not a lot to do where I'm at. You know, people are just too far ahead and, you know, a mistake or two away from being passed by Magnum. So I'm just trying to keep it on the track, trying to keep everything nice and clean. And for the most part, I do. It's about lap 27 where I'm on the main straight and I've been looking at Berserker J all the way up there. And before I couldn't see him, and then I could start seeing him a little bit. So I'm wondering if his tires had fallen off or he's on a fuel can saver mode of some flavor. And I'm going, okay, so that's my next goal. And I see Shane pits, and then he comes out just right ahead of me. And I'm going, oh boy, because 
I know Shane. He's a fast driver. He comes out in front of me. There is no chance that he's going to catch him. So it's like, okay, I am okay finishing seventh at this point. At this point. And I'm just trying to follow Shane, do his lines, try to keep up if I can. And then finally, Berserker just falls off the track at the last corner on lap 28 and going, oh, that's a bummer. So again, I'm trying to keep up with Shane. I know I'm not going to make any passes, but I might as well just try. And then suddenly the race is over. I'm like, well, that's odd. I thought I had another lap. And what it turns out is that the people running at the front somehow, I still don't know, while they were just blowing the doors off of us, they didn't even decide to pit. So while we all decide to pit, they were lapping us at that point. So when they got to lap 30, the rest of us were on lap 29, so the race ended early for the rest of us, I guess. So it's like, huh, all right. Well interesting and there you have it another week of downshift racing league has passed and this was the week that i needed where we have some very close fighting in the tuesday race i've said this before and i'll keep saying it again every day is learning experience with these guys and this thursday is going to stick with me for a very long time. Yeah, maybe not for the right reasons, but at the end of the day, the realization that we're here to have a good time. Yeah, it's great if you're competitive, but at the end of the day, if you screw up, if you have issues of your own, or if things don't go your way, and you nearly want to quit, either don't, like realize your mistakes or do you know if you get so caught up with it maybe league racing isn't for you maybe you should just work on the daily races or something but we're here to have a good time to build relationships and to be as competitive as we can be but don't let that ever get in the way of building those relationships and having a good time because if it does maybe this isn't for you you know and i think this sunday this sunday race was exactly what i needed to bring me back into remembering this is why we're here i didn't win but i didn't try to not win <laughs> You know, it's I tried my best within the relative skill level that I was, and I was more focused on getting my shifting right, and I was trying to make sure that my racing was as close as I could and minimizing my own personal mistakes so I could have a good time. Which, at the end of the day, that rubbed off on other people instead of having this guy who was down to the dumps going, oh, blah, 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 blah. Kind of ruins it for everybody else. So, you know, if you got issues, try to take it in the chin. Try to not, you know, just try to not to worry about it. Get back on the road and keep fighting, you know. So if you have enjoyed this content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Got some more great videos coming on up. And, of course, another great week of downshift racing coming up next week. So stay tuned for that. Again, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day. Take care. Bye.